Good evening and welcome back. My name is Chris and I am your host. Joining me tonight are Dean, Vegeta, <laughs> and Dan. I, I don't I don't have a Dragon Ball Z impersonation. Sorry. <laughs> we have returned from our brief hiatus and are primed to talk about the games we played in June. Has Dean mastered Kimono Simulator 2015? Find out right now. This is the Stone Age Gamer. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to episode 56 of the Stone Age Gamer podcast. You may have noticed that our show is a bit later than usual. It's because we've shifted around our recording schedule, hopefully in order to make our lives a bit more workable. So you can expect new episodes on Fridays instead of Wednesdays now. But enough talk about schedules. Let's talk about video games, specifically what we've been playing slash doing lately. Mr. Dan, why don't you start us off? Well, this has been a uh, relatively busy uh, June, anyway. Lots of, uh, lots of balls in the air, as it were. Lots of things going on. So I didn't have too much time uh, to buy very much or play very much. Thankfully... Uh, the two games that I played this month were free, uh, if you had PS Plus anyway. First one that I wanted to talk about is a game that I'm really glad I didn't buy for 30 or $40 when it originally came out, is Metal Gear Solid Five Ground Zeroes. Now, Ooh, that's not a good start. <laughs> well, see, here's the thing. Uh, for those of you that have listened to the show previously, you know that I am... A pretty big Metal Gear Solid fan. It's one of my very favorite things. I'm I'm into the games. I kind of generally support everything that that Kojima does. Uh, but this was a glorified demo, and they put it out originally at like forty bucks. And I got to tell you, there was there was not forty bucks worth of content in this uh, in this demo. Basically, what it is is an introductory mission kind of gets you caught up as much as you fucking can get caught up in this story. And, uh, like, it's Metal Gear. So if you've played Metal Gear games before, uh, more specifically the the most recent one, Metal Gear Solid 4, you kind of know what you're getting into. It it looks stunning, right? Like, one of the things that, that the Metal Gear games have always, always done on the on whatever system they've come out on is push kind of the graphical capabilities, and they are always that wow factor. I mean, the first time we played Metal Gear Solid on the PlayStation, it was like, oh my god, what the <laughs> fuck is that? That's amazing. And then you saw it on, on PlayStation 2, and you're like, holy shit, look at the rain. Look at the goddamn rain. It's fucking incredible. <laughs> look at Raiden's hair. Look at Raiden's hair. It's so gently wafting in the breeze as he cartwheels with his hands over his fucking cash and prizes. <laughs> it was glorious. It was beautiful, right? Same thing, Metal Gear Solid 3 and, and 4, and, and this one is no different. The The graphics are just stunning in this game. The voice work was interesting because it's not David Hayter uh, voicing Snake. Oh, it's what, Snake. Kiefer Sutherland, right? It's Kiefer Sutherland oh because you're not, you're not Solid Snake. You're Big Boss. Huh. And I know that they were clones, and I know that David Hayter had done the voice before. <laughs> but like the clones, but they got different voices. Yeah, they cloned everything know, but the vocal cords. They, they did. They, it was it was part of the genome project that got a little fucking tweaked. Whatever. It it's really not as big a deal as people were making it out to be. There, fuck this game. It's not David Hayter. Blah. It's whatever. Kiefer Sutherland does a fine job. Uh, the the story itself that that you play through is just a little rescue mission into this camp. You have to get this this kid out and and this this girl that are are part of your freedom fighters, right? Like big boss is kind of a shitty person, so he has children fighting for him because you know why not? And it's got the trademark Metal Gear weirdness in it. Like the little kid is given a tape by one of the main bad guys that you're gonna face later on in the game. Uh, he's given a cassette tape, and he he unplugs headphones from his chest, like he has a three and a quarter inch jack on his chest, as you do for some reason, and plugs them into the Walkman, and it Wait, very Walkman. Yeah, it's very clearly a, a Walkman. It is very clearly 
a Sony Walkman. Boner um, Jams 2015 mixtape. <laughs> Boner Jams 2015. Guess this and isn't getting ported to Xbox. No, it certainly is. I don't know if they're going to make it like, I don't know, <laughs> an Acomosphere Walkman or something. What shit. was what was their um, a Zune? It's going to be a Zune. <laughs> <laughs> a Zune man. <laughs> You know, not for nothing, I had a Zune. As and did I. Don't <laughs> mock the mighty Zune. It was Zune. pretty good. Like, as far as an MP3 <laughs> player, it wasn't bad. Anyway, um, so yeah, like, it's it's got that weirdness in it. it the, the actual mission itself, uh, you can get through it if you're any good at Metal Gear, or if you're like me and haven't played Metal Gear in a long time and you play through it the second time. Uh, you can get through it in about, like, an hour and a half. It's really not very long at all. Um, once you do get through it, though, there is a a decent, decently sized trailer movie at the end of it, kind of advertising the rest of the game, and just fucking insane shit happens as is as is want to do in a Metal Gear game. People fucking lose limbs, and th- the story is set up, and shit's about to go down. And it did do a really good job of getting getting me excited for Metal Gear Solid 5, but I would have been damn pissed if I spent money on this. Like, the fact that it was on PS Plus was awesome. It should have always been a demo, though. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Have that's... you guys seen stuff about this? Yeah, I've I've been hearing that. It, it, your exact sentiments are all I've heard about this game. It's like, yeah, it's neat, but it's not a game. It's, um... I... I it's just like a, it's like the Metal Gear Solid 2 demo was, right? It's not a whole lot more content than that one was, is it? No, it's really not. I mean, it, it really is just this introductory rescue mission. And if you want to, uh, you can extend this, a, you know, a, a great deal if you want to play through and take out every guard and find every little thing that you can find and, you know, do everything perfect and stealthily and all that shit. Or if you just want to get through the story, you know, like I said, you can get through it in about an hour and a half. Hmm. Like the first time that I went through it, um, it took me about three hours to, to, to do the whole thing because I was going way slower than I had to, than I even realized, you know, trying to get used to some of the new mechanics and the way that it controls and, and just, I mean, little things are tweaked. It's, it's nothing that's revolutionary or anything. Not certainly not like the change between Metal Gear Solid Two and Metal Gear Solid Three, where the camera was completely different and and shit was it was just like a brand new game. This is, if you've played Metal Gear Solid Four, this is it's basically the same thing. Well, I guess the the main question is: Is this content going to be in the Phantom Pain? I don't believe it is. All right. Like I well, I think this is what happens. Like where the Phantom Pain will start off is after like, the giant explosions and shit that happen at the end of this demo. All right, so, I mean, I guess I... How much were they charging for this thing? I think on, on Xbox One and PS4, I think it was 40 and then on PS3 and 360, I think it was 30 Hmm. Like, I mean, if it had been 20 That's exactly okay, where sure, I was thinking, because, like, 20 Because they're, they're like, reusing all these assets and, and the, the game engine yeah. and everything in the, the final game. It's not like this piece of it clearly needed that much more effort of production value, you know what I mean? No, it, it really didn't. Uh, it, there are, like, side missions and shit you can do after you beat the main story. I mean, there is some replayability um, in the game itself, but you know, even so, like, if you haven't played it yet, if you're listening to this and you were kind of on the fence about whether or not to play Ground Zeroes, um, they, I, who knows? They might include it in the release of Phantom Pain. Well, they very like, well might. Does it does it feel necessary? Like if you no. say you didn't play this and you jumped into right into the beginning of Phantom Pain, not that we know what that is, but right? Do you think that this is gonna do, anybody who hasn't played this is gonna feel lost? I I really don't think so. I mean, I really don't. And if you do, I, quite honestly, you can go onto YouTube and watch a playthrough of it. You know what I mean? Like it's. It's not worth the money. I like, and that breaks my heart to say. This just smells like a DLC pack done backwards, like the kind of thing they they would release after they release Phantom Pain, and then you release this as DLC, like prequel DLC or something. Like I, I don't know this. This whole thing just strikes me so strange. It really was, and like Kojima's reasoning behind it, or or at least the the public face that he had to put to it. Um, you know, as we know, he's not with Konami anymore, and, and who knows if any of this played a part in it. 
but the the public face that he put to it was this part of the game is done um and we can put it out now so that you guys can play some metal gear solid now and not have to wait until the whole game ships in you know october november december whenever we get around to it you know it's shipping in i believe november um I could be wrong though. Could be October, but uh, like that—that that was the reasoning behind it, which is somewhat solid reasoning at twenty dollars. I don't know about you guys, <laughs> you know? but I—I I normally like my games whole and yeah, all I'd together. Ju- yeah, I'd, I'm with Dean. I'd rather just get like, you know, that would be like yo know, Nintendo saying like, ah, well we've done, we've done some of Zelda, so here's like the first dungeon, and uh, you can buy it for full price, and uh, we'll sell you the rest of the game later at more full price. Well, Peace. but let's be honest here. I mean, you you raise a, a, an interesting point. If this open world Zelda game next summer, they're like, so the first three hours of the game are forty bucks. That shit's gonna sell out everywhere. I and would you tell know them it is. to shove it so far up their ass that they'd be seeing Zelda exclusively. <laughs> But you know you're very much in the minority on that one. Yeah, I'm, you, well, you know, you here's got, the thing, Dan. <laughs> let's I be honest. Wouldn't, I wouldn't pay money for that. And if I'm not paying money for it, I'm I'm the target audience for that. So, yeah, of course, I'm certain a lot of people would pay for it. But I think they would really be segmenting their audience because... Also, I, you know, I think they'd lose respect for some of the more hardcore fans. That's a very, like, Kickstarter-y, indie type of move. And I get why they do it, because they're trying to garner money for a product that they need to show something for. So I get why smaller companies do that, because they want to get their product out there and get people excited for that. However... Nintendo, uh, Konami, fucking Capcom, they don't need to do that. Why? Like, people know what they're getting when they make a game. Like, if you hear Metal Gear, you know what you're getting. I don't want a eighth of the game. I want the whole thing when it comes out. I, I don't know. This is me. And I, I don't no, know. I'm, I'm with you, man. Where my yeah. brain goes to is that, like, all right, so, so going back to the Zelda example, my thought would be, all right, they're going to sell this in chunks. But then eventually gonna, they're going to sell the whole thing in like a game of the year package or something like that. So I would ju- I would rather just wait for that instead of taking you know chunks of the game piecemeal. Now if they're going to be little extraneous things like uh, like DLC, that sort of stuff, I don't mind picking that stuff up piecemeal. But like I said before, this just seems like going out at the backwards route. It's like getting getting the bonus content before you get the actual game, and that just kind of seems. It's like eating your ice cream before your steak. It's just like, okay, it's tasty, yeah, it was, it's but it's weird. This is this really weird. the order I want to go in? You know. Well, and and like I said, that's the thing. It is a complete story. You do play a complete mission. There is a beginning, middle, and end to it. Things are are radically different for Big Boss at the end of this than they are when he starts. However, it is not something that could not be covered in a cutscene, you know, which you know they're going to have. It's it's not no, something that could not be... Scenes? No. It could definitely have been covered, you know, for, for people who haven't played it. So, I, like I said, I'm glad I I'm glad I played through it. I loved it. I thought it was awesome. Um, but I, I didn't... Put it this way. I didn't buy it, right? I waited because I just kind of had a feeling that with PlayStation Plus, the way that they have their service set up, that this would make its way there eventually, and I would play it that way. And, you know, for free, it was great. For a demo, it was fucking amazing. So, Hmm. that's what I got on that one. Nice. What else have you been playing? But the other game is... It's fucking strange. Alright, one of my my friends at work... Uh, introduced me to this game. It is a, a mobile game on Android and iOS, and it is called Final Fantasy Record Keeper. And... <laughs> sounds like Final Fantasy with a pen. It sounds like some bullshit, right? Like, it sounds like a <laughs> fan-made game that, like, somebody was like, oh, Final Fantasy Record Keeper, let's put it out. Um, but what it is, it's really fucking cool. Like, if you have played through... The bulk of the Final Fantasy games, and as far as I can tell, when I say the bulk of the Final Fantasy games, I mean, you know, up to like 10. It doesn't really seem to cover uh, anything past that, and and I'm just guessing at 10. I'm not 
a ton of the way through it, but it seems that's about where it goes up to. Um, what what happens, the, the way the game is set up is that in the record room of the Final Fantasy universe, there is Dr. Mog, um, which is how I've always said it. I don't know if you guys say it differently. Dr. Mog? Dr. Mog. Like, is he wearing a lab coat and a stethoscope? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's fucking weird. Like, he doesn't have a stethoscope, but, like... Is it Mog or Moog? Well, I mean, because I've seen it's it Moogle. written as... Yeah, they're, I've seen written as Moogles, but, like, there was... I but think I've there was a character Mog. in Final Fantasy VI that was a Moogle named Mog? Yeah, okay, that's... Because there was definitely an M-O-G, like, and, and it, I remember the first time I encountered that was Final Fantasy VI, or when it was called Three here in America, so... I don't know if this is this is like an Aerith Ares situation, but I've I've always referred to him as Mog because that's how I learned what that thing was. Okay, yeah, that's I've always said Doctor Mog, or well, not Doctor. I've only said Doctor Mog for like a week. <laughs> They've all had doctorates. As far <laughs> as Fuck I'm it, his new name is Doctor Shivago. Go on, <laughs> Doctor Shimago. So, Doctor Shimago is uh, is there with Tyro, who is the best student. Uh, in th- in the class, and their job is to take care of the magic paintings that depict battles from previous Final Fantasy worlds. Right? You with me so far? Uh, sure. Let sure. Let's do it. Okay. So what's happening is the paintings are disappearing. Is so Bowser doing it? <laughs> no surprise. Fucking well, I don't Bowser. know. I haven't. I haven't finished the game. Um, so what you have to do, unsurprisingly enough, is you have to journey into the paintings and fight the battles to stop the paintings from disappearing because the memories and the stories are being corrupted within the paintings themselves. Basically what it is, is they came up with an excuse to enable you to battle through the worlds of Final Fantasy, and I just looked it up, Final Fantasy 1 through 12. Hmm. And you can play as Cloud eventually. You can play as, like, Squall eventually. And there's weird, like, little bonuses. Like, if you play in the Final Fantasy section when you go to build out your party, if you put Cloud in into the Final Fantasy party that you're battling with... He gets um, bonuses to, like, his attacks and his defense and shit. And, like, his weapons get bonuses if they're weapons that are from that u- universe as well. Um, so, like, there's some strategy involved in it. There's, like, your regular classes, like your your old school, like, Black Mage, Red Mage, White Mage, Summoner, Ranger Bard. Like, all that shit's in there. Like, Ninjas and Vikings and everything. And it's just, it's a turn-based Final Fantasy game where you're kind of go. It's like the greatest hits version of of the Final Fantasy games, and it's really fucking fun. How many like, stars I do I need to get to Bowser? Uh, 48. 48, got it. Cool, cool. Do I get to be Metal uh, Cloud? No, you get to be Metal Sonic, actually. Metal Sonic, <laughs> even better. I love it. God. Okay, I'm going to download this game. How much is it? $10? $70? It's free? Totally free. What do I have to do? Do I have to jerk off some rapid <laughs> Square Enix or something? Yes. You have to go to Squeenix... And make him Squeenix. I got Ew. No, it's um, it's a really fucking weird concept, right? Like, it's, it's a very, very strange concept. But if you are a Final Fantasy nerd, and, you know, I, I think all of us on this podcast are, and certainly most of us listening to this podcast are Final Fantasy nerds, it's, it's the greatest hits of Final Fantasy. You've got summons, you've got limit breaks, um... They call them soul breaks in this one, but it, it's a fucking limit break. Um, you can equip your characters. You can get new weapons. You can buy shit. There's gold. There's fucking... I don't know if there's chocobos yet, but I imagine there's chocobos. It's it's fucking Final Fantasy, man. It's how, fun. How do they make money? Are there ads or something? Like, what's going on? Yeah, there's, there's like... There's a catch. There is. Like, you can buy shit. There's some, like, in-app purchases, I believe. I don't know. I didn't pay that. I always skip... Like, I'm so conditioned to be like, there's a thing that's not part of the game. I'm not even going to read it, right? Like, and I just skip right past it, you know? Um, But, yeah, there's shit in there. Like, there's... You can do, like... There's, like, these weird... um, If you've ever played, like, the Marvel Contest of Champions thing, like the PC and, and iOS game where you get random drops and whatnot and, like... 
one of the drops they had was Sephiroth and his sword. So you could pay money to get more spins on this thing to get more random drops and that sort of shit. So I, there's ways to fucking make money off of it. I don't know. I, I haven't found that I've needed to do any of that shit yet. So I, so I don't even really pay attention to it. Um, it's fun, man. There's a Sid. What more do you need? An army of Sids. I want yeah, all there's the like multiple Sids. <laughs> there should be all of the Sids. Yeah, Final Fantasy, greatest hits, iOS. I just got a 6 Plus, too, so it looks fucking really good on the phone. I'm excited hmm. about it. You bastard in your 6 well, Plus. Well, see, it, like, I was upgrading from the 5. Not even the 5S, because I ain't fancy. But I had a 6 in my hand, and I was like, all right, well, I already need to use two hands on this. So if I already <laughs> need to use two hands, I might as well get the bigger fucking screen. You well, know? That's fair. So there you go. Metal Gear Solid Five, Final that's Fantasy Record Keeper. Good shit. Glorious. All right. Well, uh, Dean, would you like to go next? Let's get the first thing first out of the way. Uh, when you mentioned free-to-play games on the iOS, I actually tried this game called Sonic Runners that I saw some streamer playing like a month ago, but it wasn't out on the iOS. Apparently, they took it down for some reason, and they just brought it back up. And it's everything I hate about mobile games. <laughs> Fuck you, Sega. <laughs> Fuck you to no end. Like, they tell you it's free, and it's like, yeah, some in-app purchases. And I'm like, ah, oh, you're right, whatever. Maybe it continues or something. No, everything is purchasable. They don't... Ex and, like, it's supposed to be an infinite runner type thing where you're just supposed to get a fucking high score. No, fuck that. Just their story and stuff and the, all these things do different shit and it doesn't run well. And I have an iPhone 6, so I'm like, if it doesn't run well in here and there's only one extra model up, are you telling me it runs that much better on that phone? So I, I was a little disenchanted by the whole thing. You, I, it, again, it's supposed to be an infinite runner. And I was like, ah, it might be fun to pass the time with. No, it's not fun to pass the time with. No, it's not fun to do anything with. It's not even fun to look at. So, once again, I repeat, fuck you, Sega. You can't do anything <laughs> right. I bet you guys can't even wipe your ass right. So, go die in a fire. I'm like imagining a, a free-to-play <laughs> infinite runner where... The, the game's free to play, but you have to buy the oxygen for your character. So Sonic is slowly suffocating until you start paying money. <laughs> I didn't the um didn't like the head of Sega or something just come out and apologize yeah, to the fans for the last twenty five years. Thanks, <laughs> Dick. I I believe there was a quote in there, something along the lines of we really should be paying more attention to quality or something like that. Like they haven't been paying attention to quality all along, but they're going to start now. Oh, good. I agree. Fuck you, Sega. Glad to see of it all. Goddamn hedgehog. Yeah, it only took look, massive hemorrhages of money to make them realize that they should be paying attention. Maybe that's a thing. Yeah, you know, if if the games suck, eventually people will stop buying them. And no, look at that. The game sucked for a while, and people stopped buying them. And then they stopped doing all the really great things that used to make them, you know, great, like experimental games and weird stuff, like like Seaman or whatever. And and here well, we are. Fucking knights, like knights yeah. into dreams and shit. Like fucking. But look, like categorically, Sega has sucked since the Genesis. There have been a couple of good things that have come out on their other platforms, but there is a reason that they only make games now. They've yeah, been I mean, out shit. There were since good, the Genesis. There were good games on the Saturn, but the Saturn sure. sucked. And then there was like, then I mean, I don't know. The Dreamcast was pretty cool. The Dreamcast. No, was there really was cool. there there was some good stuff on the Dreamcast, but how much of that good stuff was made by Sega versus how much of it was Power Stone? And <laughs> everything Fury, Mark was Power Stone. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like just. <sighs> Fuck Sega. <laughs> I love them. I used to. I re fuck, you know, spoilers for like six months from now or whenever the hell it's going to be when we do our top 10 Master System games. But fuck, there were a lot of games that I really liked on that console. Yeah. They, but it's been steadily downhill since then. It really has been. They've got these little glimmers of hope like the uh, the so Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. 
That's a pretty kick-ass game. That's a fantastic racing game. And it's like this love letter to all these great Sonic franchises of yesteryear. We like flying around as Opa Opa from Fantasy Zone and like. Yeah, I dig that game. There's a, I like there it, an but there's also stage a, or something. Like, there's an afterburner sake. stage. There's a Panzer Dragoon Orta stage. And if, if but there's also it, a Wreck It Ralph cameo. So. Yeah, no. If you Again, get it on uh, off, Steam, Sega. you can get hey, like Ralph every character awesome. possible. I, I, I fucking loved Wreck It yeah, Ralph. And sorry to step over. Sorry to step on what you were saying, Dean. But <laughs> Wreck It Ralph has nothing to do with that fucking game. No, at all. No, you're right. There was a poster of Sonic the Hedgehog and Wreck It Ralph, and that was about it. Well, yeah. I, th- th- by that logic, fucking Wreck It Ralph should be in the next Pac Man game. But he is. And the next Street Fighter. But he is. <laughs> oh, man. And the next whatever the fuck the zombie was from, and all that other shit. Fuck, Wreck It Ralph's a great movie, but again, no. Come well, on, Sega, get your shit together. You're making me sad. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna not talk about that anymore. But if you want, buy uh, Sonic and Sega All Stars Racing on Steam because you get every unlockable character possible: Banjo Kazooie, Team Fortress characters, uh, uh, Rio from fucking Chenmu. They're all there, so. I thought you were going to say Angry Birds. Banjo no, and Kazooie are in that? Uh, I'm pretty sure they are in some way, shape, or form. I think they were in the Xbox one, and then when it got ported over to Steam, they left them in. Pretty sure. Hmm. And if you would like to hear more about how much Dean loves and or hates Sonic, tune in every Monday to the Paper Cuts podcast here on <laughs> GeekAid.com. Yeah, let's not do that. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, you should totally listen, but not no, because No, you should totally fucking Sonic. listen. <laughs> Uh, Dean yeah, so... Sonic Boom. Yeah, I don't want to He's got bandages wrapped around his limbs right now. Yeah, because I punched a pattern in my wall that says, Die Sega. <laughs> Remember, Dean, it's down the street, not across the, not across the road. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, well, that's enough suicide humor. What else you got for us, Dean? <laughs> Uh, I played some Dota, so that's just more masochism right there. Um, that was actually fun. Their annual big tournament is going on, or it's about to start, uh, the International. This is the fifth one, I believe. Take a guess on how much money people have spent and is going towards the pot. $12. $37 billion. Close. Uh, it's up to $15 million. Oh my Jesus God. Christ. $15 million. Mind you, that's money that people have spent to put towards this. I've put money out of my own pocket to do this. Like, I've, I've given to their, their prize pot. Essentially what they do is I, it's the closest thing to in a MOBA that you can get to microtransactions, I guess. What they do is they give you a comp- – uh, this thing called the compendium, which is sort of like a program when you go to a hockey game, gives all the stats for the players and whatnot, um, lets you make predictions on who's going to win, uh, lets you vote on the all-star game that'll happen and everything. It's a very, very like comprehensive guide to this tournament that's going to happen. However, I believe it's f- 10 or $15.00. To purchase now if you're really really into this stuff and i i am i do follow these guys somewhat regularly um you you normally put out the money but then you multiply that by say seven million people well then you got all where all that money's coming from but then on top of that you can purchase like item chests and stuff with super rare crap in it and i think it's like two dollars for a chest and it's again you get a myriad of stuff so it's uh, people tend to do that you know dress up your character funky from what they normally are or whatever and it's neat would i spend hundreds of dollars doing it like some people no no i would not they don't get that type of money from me (laughs) they get the ten dollars i spent on the compendium that's about it and i did that because um what happens is as each level is met it's sort of like a kickstarter however much money they get they sort of bounce back to you by adding in special um backgrounds and badges and character outfits that you get for free just for purchasing this thing 
as you can imagine, I don't think they thought to reach $15 million because the last, I think, cutoff was 12 So I don't know if they're going to add any more. They might. There's about a month to go till this tournament even starts up. So I can only imagine they're going to get even more money till then. So we'll see what happens. I'll keep you updated on that. But as far as my own playing goes, I made this really, really awesome play a couple days ago as this big, big rock monster. You know what his name is? Uh, big McLarge. Rockman? Huge. Tiny. Oh, get it? Because like, that's see ironic. What you did there. Yeah, not. yeah, it's great. I love it. But Wasn't there a um, character named Tiny in uh, Clay Fighter? Uh, yes, there is. On a totally unrelated note. Why the fuck do you know that off the top of your head? <laughs> uh, oh, yes, there was Tiny and Mr. Frosty and Helga and, of course, everyone's favorite, Taffy. Fuck, why do I know this off the top of my head? <laughs> I was just going to say, now, now who's, you know, fuck. words that I can't think of? God, I should stop drinking. I should start drinking. Okay. <laughs> anyway, go on, Dean. Uh, Yeah, so it got to the point where... Uh, we were, um, it's, it's a 5v5 type of game and everything, so, you know, it's, it's very back and forth, and I got to a point where I was fighting a bunch of guys, it was in a group, and I got an ultra kill. So we were in a team fight, and, uh, it was, uh, Dota is a 5v5 type of game, and my buddy, who was there with me he was like i'm gonna lay out a stun you're just gonna fuck them all up because that's what tiny does is he fucks shit up because he's a giant rock monster why would you expect anything else so i jumped in there he stunned them all and i basically tiny can throw people up in the air and throw them at uh, other people so i made a giant avalanche i threw a guy at another guy and i got an ultra kill an ultra kill is killing all five people in a row in quick succession I annihilated their entire team. Wow. I screamed so loud, (laughs) I'm pretty sure I woke up the neighbors because I was so excited. That has never, ever happened to me because I never, ever get the chance to play that type of character that can do those sort of things. And while Tiny's good, he's not that sort of good that can just go and destroy an entire team like that. So it made me really, really happy. Shout out to Arya. He's the guy who uh, made it all happen with his magic stuns. But uh, is yeah. that like is that a rare thing in Dota? Because I've obviously we've talked about it, I've never played. Like is is an ultra kill a rare thing? Yeah, like you can get a double kill or a triple kill or you know, like I said, some people even get four kills. But like I said, killing the entire team by yourself doesn't really happen all that often. And like I said, is it, it is it kind of like the nuke in Modern Warfare 2 before people started hacking it and that was just all it fucking was? Well, I mean... You know, it'd be like, oh shit, somebody is that good to get like fucking 25 kills or whatever. Sort of, I mean, yeah. Except I don't have to... I don't hit a button just to Mm -hmm. annihilate everyone. I literally had to jump in there and hope to God everything went right and it did. I had to make the right key presses. It was good. It made me very happy. Anyone in Dota knows that that's like a very difficult thing to do. And with Tiny, it's not really easy. So I was super pumped and really happy. I just wanted to mention that because it made me feel really, really good about myself before I started playing my next game, which was Pokemon, the Twitch Plays Pokemon (laughs) version. And when we were at Too Many Games, they had a cartridge version of that that I could play on my Game Boy. Twitch Plays Pokemon uh, version of Pokemon is like the hard mode of the regular Pokemon Blue and Red. What they did was they opened it up so you can catch all the Pokemon without having to trade or anything, which is great. But they also made it so that the leveling curve is way higher. It took me four hours to get the first badge. Four fucking hours. I could do that in the first game, the regular one, in about ten minutes. I f- I felt I I can do that with a magic carp in yeah, twenty minutes. I I could. You I need could. a first badge. I get it for you. I in could. 20 minutes. Yeah, but I can't now. <laughs> I can't. It sucked. It was terrible. It made me feel bad about myself because the eight year old version of me was really kicking me in the nuts, being like, "You suck at this game. What happened? Mm-hmm. What happened to us? Get on your game." 
So five hours later, I'm still in Mount Moon, and I can't get past the super nerd who's guarding the fossils because I don't want to play this game anymore. But I have to because I paid thirty dollars for it. So you, you used to be a poker master. Fuck me. Now you're a poker bitch. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Not feeling I gotta, good. I gotta ask, what does this game have to do with Twitch Plays Pokemon? It was actually made on the. 50th day, I think, of that Twitch Plays Pokemon stream they had going on. Uh And it was made by the people who ran the stream as a new version for them to go back and uh, play. So, for one, they could catch all 150 Pokemon without it uh, really running into any issues. Uh, Secondly, so that uh, it wasn't as easy to really get past because the gyms and stuff were super easy and everything especially with the way the game was being played because it was mainly just people walking around in tall grass and kind of hitting buttons and attacking so it was by just repetitiveness the pokemon were getting incredibly leveled super quickly and you know when you're the game's on for 24 hours at a time they're gonna get pretty strong pretty quick even if you're just grinding low level areas so with that um they ended up making the uh, leveling way more difficult, way quicker. Um, there's also the addition to something called a battle tent, which is sort of like an endless mode where you just go through and keep battling trainers so you can get better that way. Also, there is a new um, harder level of the Elite Four. After you beat the game and collect all 150 Pokemon, you can battle them again for the actual end certificate. And a final boss after that, uh, which Who is cool. Only uses Zubats. You know what he it's might. It's Ronald I, McDonald. It, it is Ronald <laughs> McDonald. But I thought it was cool enough to pick up, and you know, it's definitely way more challenging to the point where I just want to throw my Game Boy. But I'm not going to because money, and that would leave me with only two other Game Boys, and I like this one that I play on. Yes, I have three Game Boys. I'm happy you're enjoying it. But that seems kind of illegal. What? Like, can you just fucking sell hacked versions of games? No. I didn't think you could. I mean, you physically can, but... I mean, you can. That's why the company that was selling it doesn't sell it on their website. There used to be a website called Time Walk Games. They don't exist anymore. Oh, sure. Sure. I mean, I like, I get it. Look, it, like emulators and whatnot it's well technically this goes under the thing of homebrew which if they were going to release it to the public for free they could probably get away with that however right, that's people what i was thinking like, want to make money you know and i can't blame them for that so no sure you make a buck off of a super pop i mean that twitch plays pokemon thing was fucking huge it was for, it for was. as big as anything gets on the internet now which is for like three days yeah at most yeah, and I mean this it, it's a it's a fun game and it's definitely a new take on Pokemon which is makes it enjoyable for me and I have a fun time with it. I also bought another version for the Game Boy Advance which is a take on Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire but it's with zombies and it's a totally new story. And it's really weird but it's really cool but I figured I'd play this Twitch plays Pokemon thing first and I'll get to that other one later because it's really fucking weird. But uh yeah, I mean if you ever find one of these cartridges anywhere or something, or maybe you find the ROM hack for it, which I can't link you to or anything because that would be very illegal of me, um, download it or buy it. I don't know which is less illegal. I would I would say at this point, downloading it is probably better. Probably. I don't know where you could find it. Uh, I think there was a Reddit somewhere that had it, and again, that's probably the most legal way to do it because... It's just a mod of a game, so I'm pretty sure you could get away with doing that. Uh, I, I'm not going to talk about this anymore because I, probably mm-hmm. everything I'm doing is Nintendo being like, lawsuit, 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 lawsuit. Money, 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 mine, 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 It's just Reggie in his corporate <laughs> offices. It's just good. Get him. He slipped up. We've been monitoring his feed for months. Of course the he has. Me, me and Reggie are boys, man. Me and Awada, though. Awada and me don't get along. Friends. But, uh, yeah. Uh, you, you know, if you find that. Puppet. So, um, Sonic, no. 
Um, <laughs> Dota, yeah, sure. If you play, play Dota. Dota's great. Come find me on the uh, on the Dota scape. I go by the Vest Lord, so uh, you can come friend me or battle me or what the fuck ever you want. I'm gonna win. I'm good at Dota. <laughs> I'm real good. I'm not fifteen million dollars good, but I'm good. Uh, and then Pokemon. Yeah, sure, man. If you could find it, play it. It's a new take on Pokemon. Well, not a new take, but it's a it's a fresh experience, um, which is good because Pokemon's not nearly hard enough to be challenging. So this is definitely good. And if it was like this at the beginning, I'm sure kids probably would not have played it as much. It probably would have been a more adult <laughs> audience, to be honest, because uh, I think kids would have probably given up. You are a master of ringing endorsements, Dean. Yeah, play it if you're yeah, a fucking you know, idiot. If you if you want, you know you can play this. All right. Uh, well, we're gonna take ourselves a quick break. When we come back, I'll talk about what I've been doing, and we'll finish up for the night. So stick around. And now, here's a look at some of the other original content available right now at Geekade.com. So, you know what I like to do after a long, hard day at work? Jerking the gherkin. Other than court-martialing the private dean. I mean, obviously, that's number one on the list. But second on that list, do you know what it is that I like to do? hearing yourself talk about stuff i do i love love the sound of my own voice you know you do too right i mean that's why we're still doing this show right yeah take it or leave it so you can hear me talk you know what else i know that you like fucking metal gear we know you like, you like things gear. that are awesome i fucking love metal gear so if my math checks out and it always does because I'm a fucking super genius you must also want to listen to me read the FX9 novelization of the original NES Metal Gear see Chris had covered this back on Into the Vault a couple uh, couple months ago or a couple episodes at least anyway and it got me thinking we should probably just do audiobook versions of this well you're in luck because I am doing that very thing every Tuesday and Thursday Check out new chapters of Worlds of Power Metal Gear. as read by me, Dan Ryan. It's free, fuckers. <laughs> it's free audiobooks of a stupid fucking thing that happened. Listen! It's oddly it's entertaining. <laughs> it's, I gotta be honest with you, and you can edit this part out if you want. It is so hard to fucking read that thing. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> Holy shit. Like, I have to fight with my own brain... <laughs> which is correcting how it should have been fucking written. Oh my god, it's bad. Yeah, they don't talk but, about Justin Hawley too much in, uh, in the newer oh, Metal Gear games, do they? Fuck me. No, they don't. Jesus Christ. Like, I have to... The editing process on these alone is... Fu it's a good thing the chapters are like seven minutes long because it is a goddamn nightmare. Next up, there's a new Terminator movie and Brandon Travis decided that it would be a good time to take a look back at the series as a whole as well as talk a bit about the new film. What did they think of Arnold's latest? Don't miss Apathetic Enthusiasm Episode 21. No fate but what we make. Then, do you like big buttery slabs? Of Fabio? How about knights in full armor jumping 50 feet straight into the air? If so, Iron Sword Wizards and Warrior 2 was just the game for you. But more importantly, the game's soundtrack was awesome. Listen to the Wave Back Music Podcast Episode 7 for a tour through Kuro's most Kuros. impressive... <laughs> Don't you correct him, he was doing fine. <laughs> Listen to the Wave Back Music Podcast Episode 7 for a tour through Napa's most impressive adventure, <laughs> featuring music by the legendary David Weiss, the inventor of the potato chip. Oh, shit, really? No. <laughs> Fuck it, I'm so, like, I was so excited when I moved back north, and I was like, oh, fucking wise potato chips. So much better than Ruffles. Suck a dick, Ruffles. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Dan starts his summer-long tribute 
to kung fu movies with the Jackie Chan classic Snake in the Eagle's Shadow. It's all new every Friday, and it's the best kung fu education you can find without getting kicked in the face, or punched, or by playing kung fu for NES, which is awesome. Or, or Black Belt for the Master System, which or, is also fucking uh, awesome. Also, or Kung Fu Master for the Atari 2600. Ooh, Legend of Kagage. Ooh, uh, or, um, <laughs> oh, what's that stupid fighting game? Kung Fu Master? No. Kung Fu... Karate, Karate Champ? Champ! There you go! Boy, that guy's head in the background was really weird. That referee guy was just like, boy, that was weird. Anyway. Nightmares. Uh, <laughs> you can catch all this great stuff, plus tons of other great articles, videos, podcasts, and more exclusively at geekade.com. All right, everybody, we are back. Uh, and it is my turn to talk about what I've been up to. And let's see. The, for, for actual games that I played, much like Dan, I had a ludicrously busy June. Um, I mean, as far as like actual games I played, I could probably go on for days because I spent my birthday at Yestercades, which was amazing. And I played classic arcade games all freaking day long. It was just wonderful. I, I played Tempest. I played Moon Patrol. I played some Bubble Bobbles, Mario Brothers... Oh god, the list just goes on and on. It was it was it was a phenomenal day. But stuff that I've played at home that I haven't had a chance to talk about on the show that I find found interesting. I want to talk real quickly about um, one of the games that was part of this uh, India uh, Nindies at Home thing that Nintendo did during a E3, where they released a bunch of demos for a bunch of uh, um, eShop games that indie developers were putting out. Like just a bunch of free demos. Just here you go. Here's a chunk of the game. Have have at it during E3, and I played some of them. Uh, the one that really stuck out the most to me was a game called Typo Man, which was all right. So you're this little dude. It's a 2D game. Uh, it's it's not really a platformer so much as a, a 2D character based puzzle game. Your your character is made of the letters H E R O, so you spell hero. Except um, you're missing one of your arms. And the way the game works is that you have to kind of move around and solve these environmental puzzles using, like, physical letters that are part of your environment. So, like, one of the, the one of the, you'll, you'll see a platform, and uh, you'll, you know, spell the word lift on it, and then, you know, the platform will go up, or, you know, you'll spell, spell the word open, and something will open. Um, this This one part I got to was that just impressed the crap out of me as I was, I was playing it with my, with my wife, Karen, and the word parts sitting, sitting like on, on the side of the screen, and then there's like this other sign thing that's, that's sitting over the left part, part of the screen. But as you walk over to the word part, it starts to shake, and then as you get a little bit closer to it, the word flips itself upside down and kills you, spelling the word trap. Oh, I heard about this game. You, you start over again, and this little, this little machine can generate letters, and uh, eventually I figured out that you have to get it to generate an S. And you bring um, the S over to where uh, part's going to flip over and spell trap so that the S lands right in front of the T. And as soon as it lands, it spells the word strap. And a strap comes up and holds the whole thing in place so you can walk by safely. It was just... The whole thing was just ridiculously clever. And um, I'm really jazzed to play the final game. But Have you guys uh, heard of this game at all? Yes. I saw a little something about it. Um, it seemed like something that I would be into, but, you know, like we said, like, June was just fucking crazy busy. Yes. June was, was, was psychotic. The other game that I, I wish I had more to say about, um, because I'm really looking forward to playing more of it as time goes on, but uh, Dean was very nice and got me a copy of Splatoon for my birthday. And uh, I'm, like, thrilled to have it. I love the the way this game is put together. I love the world of it. Uh, And I'm really digging the mechanics. I've only played single player so far because I'm not really good at shooters like at all. Uh, So I'm I'm kind of playing through the single player campaign to try to get my my feet under me. I'm on like three levels in. I really have barely had any any time to play it, but I'm I'm really enjoying it. And I, I can't wait to play more of it. I love the style. I love how colorful it is. I love the weird music. I love that the character designs are all really creative too. Like, I I hate the two um, what is it, Kali and Mari, the two newscasters that you have to sit through every time you turn on the damn game. Like 
those two are obnoxious as crap. I and fucking I, love them. I want to marry both of them. I, I don't care about what's going on in the multiplayer right now. I should be able to skip this crap. Like, every single time you turn on, it's like, okay, these are the maps that are available. These are the weapons that are available. Okay, that's great, but I'm playing the single-player campaign. Why isn't there a skip button? For Christ's sake. But then you look at all the other characters, like the cat that judges the, the rounds. Uh, it's like this just fat cat thing that just kind of dances around and waves his flags around. The the, the single-player campaign, there's like this... I don't even know what he is. Is he a seat? Is he a sea urchin thing or something? I don't know the what the hell he is. The crazy old guy? Yeah, the crazy old guy. I think he's a squid. I I feel like his face, his beard is like is like supposed to be like a sea urchin thing or something or maybe, maybe. he's a sea cucumber. Oh god, oh. no. Let's hope not. <laughs> let let let's hope not. But either way, all the, the character designs are like they're they're just fantastic. And I know um I I know you guys you guys both have this game too, right? Yep. Yeah. I don't love it. <laughs> Aww. No, I don't like for me like I I see what they're going for. I liked it quite a bit more after I changed the con um sorry, I almost choked on my own uh, spit there. It's ridiculous. I'm a grown ass man, I shouldn't do that anymore. Um I liked it way more after I changed the controls to a more traditional shooter style gameplay. I really just don't fucking like at all any game where I have to tilt the controller around. It just bothers the shit out of me. And it's a personal thing and like I know I'm not I know I'm not the only one who feels that way, but I know among like Wii U gamers and whatnot that I'm mostly in the mi- minority on that, but it's just not intuitive like for somebody it's not intuitive for somebody who has played a shit ton of shooters before jumping into that control screen scheme it's really fucking hard to control it is i i turned it off too like as soon as i had the option because i was trying to get used to it and like i get it to an extent like it actually i started to get good at it when i was playing uh, wind waker hd because uh some of the aiming in that uh works the same way and it kind of works in conjunction with the right analog stick so you can use it as like fine tuning i guess and and that eventually started to make sense to me, but when I started playing Splatoon, I was just, like, it was all over the place. And as soon as I switched to dual analog, I'm still having a real hard time with it because I, I really suck at aiming with an analog stick, but at least I feel like I'm a little bit more of control. Well, you, you don't suck at aiming. What they did, which is ridiculous, was they made an auto-aim feature which you can't take off. So when you get close to something that's aimable, it snaps to it, whether it be an edge or a wall or really or a anything. Person. Yeah, so a lot I've of the time... I've been times, very thankful for that because well, I actually do really suck at aiming. Well, the, the problem is is when you're trying to aim for someone and then it snaps to them, you end up over-aiming and you overshoot. They need to fix that because... I. What ha- ends up happening is is that I'll go to aim at someone and then it'll lock onto them and I'll just fucking already zoom over them. So I, I had to make it a habit of when it locked on. I had to basically take my hands off the that thumbstick and just uh, move to uh, strafe and everything, which is really, really, really fucking annoying, especially online. You want to do it offline? That's fine. Or make it an option. I don't want to play with it on all the time, though. That That is something that does deter me from playing a bit more than I do. Yeah, it's it's one of the things that really bugs me about where Nintendo is currently, and I totally understand why they do it, but it's the same thing with the Wii U version of the Metroid Prime trilogy. Like, I should have the option to control that the old way, too. You know, I get why... It's in there for the Wii U controls, and, like, some people may argue that it's better, but I can't stand those fucking controls. And if I had known that I couldn't switch it when I purchased it, I would not have purchased it. Now, that's on me for not doing my research, you know what I mean? But, like, same thing in Splatoon. Give me the option to turn the auto-aim off. You know, it's that's the thing that's keeping hardcore gamers, 
you know, quote unquote, whatever the fuck that actually means from adopting the Wii U and loving it as much as we all want to. Cause like right now it's like, man, it's a fun little system, but it's never going to be my go-to ever again because I'm not a baby and I don't need to be treated like one in certain games. You know what I mean? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. See, I, I guess I do need to be treated that way because I, it's it's well, one yeah, of the more that's... playable. Because like I don't I don't do shooters. I'm I'm awful at those kinds of shooters. So like, I mean for like for the original Metroid Prime, it is weird that the the Prime trilogy didn't include more classic style controls. Like obviously it wasn't going to include dual analog because the original ones didn't. But changing them to exclusively motion controls, I can see where you're coming from on that one. Like. Yeah, it's it's bullshit. Like I don't want to play it. I I you know what I, mean? I and I'm not love gonna. the motion controls in that game. Those are those are some of the few games that I really really liked where they went with it because I can aim that way. Like I can do keyboard and mouse, and that always felt a lot more like that to me. I can aim with an IR sensor and I can do it very quickly. So I I really appreciated that in there. But not having control options is like. And I understand it's it's I guess it's you know it's more programming it's more things to throw in there because but Nintendo opened that door themselves by having like nine million different control schemes so you've right. got a and, game and like, that's really the thing it's the option yeah just just having the options like you play Super Mario 3D World and every freaking controller option on the planet is available for that one you can play with a Wii remote a Wii remote and a nunchuck a Wii remote and a classic controller. Uh, just a pro controller, just the gamepad, whatever combination you want, you can work into that game. And and more games should have that option to them. Like, you shouldn't ha- unless it's intrinsic to the gameplay itself. Like, you know, there are some games that it would it's bothersome that you can't play off of the gamepad. But then there's other games that it makes sense because the gamepad's part of the game. Like, like Zombie U, for example. Like, sure, the game would be really cool with the pro controller, but that that second screen is part of what makes that game cool. So I get why they made that choice. But something like Runner 2, why can't I play that with my classic, my, my, my pro controller? That's just insanity. But anyway, Splatoon, it, I, I love the shit out of it. Um, I'm, I'm charmed beyond belief just by, from the world itself. And as far as controllability goes, I'm, I'm learning it and I'm getting better at it. And you know, we'll see where it goes. I mean, I might wind up getting really pissed off by the auto aim eventually too. But as of right now, it's it's making the game a hell of a lot more playable for me than other third person shooters have ever been. I think it'll have a big enough audience to keep its its trend going as long as they keep the content up, and that's appreciable for Nintendo. And I like the gusto that they've had behind you know really hyping up that game. I uh, I I hope it lasts. If they patch the auto aim, I'll play it a lot more, and I do play a decent amount already. I I at least play you know a few times, in you know a, every week, week and a half. So you know I'm 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 in it a decent amount. I normally play like five or six hours a week, just to you know bullshit or something. You know while I'm waiting to for dinner or something like that. So you know it's 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 a fun time killer, and I I really do enjoy the general atmosphere of the game. If they just tweak some of the other stuff, I might invest a little bit more time. Yeah, it's, that's the thing that breaks my heart about it, is that I was, I, I like playing shooters. I'm a big fan of playing shooters, but I can't play those with my kids. And it looked like this was going to be an opportunity for Nintendo to get me back in the fold. And like, here's this style of game that you like that you can play with your kids. And I can't because I can't get past the controls. Because, you know, like I said, I, I just, I don't need those training wheels. I, I just can't play with them. Hmm. Well, I, you know, I guess we'll see what happens. Uh, they've they've been patching stuff, but I, this sounds, I, I, don't, I would be shocked and amazed if they actually patched to that degree on this one. But then again, they, they did some pretty major overhaul patches to, uh, what was that, Codename Steam. So I guess anything's possible. And the, I mean, the game's done extraordinarily well for Nintendo. It's, it's you know, it's already done over a million, which is, is great. It's it's exactly what Nintendo needed right now, so I guess we'll see where uh, where the world goes. Yeah, fuck Sega. I agree. Exactly, <laughs> fuck Sega. Uh, but speaking of <laughs> Sega, um, that's probably the 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 biggest accomplishment for me over over this last month, which I I just finished probably about a week ago now. Um, I I 
over the last, I'd say, like, couple of years, I had come into a couple of large Sega Genesis collections. Um, a friend of mine who worked with me, he gave me his old Sega Genesis library, and uh, then I recently bought a whole mess, like, just, just a giant mess of Genesis games off of this other guy. And I, I had been inputting stuff, and in, I have a cataloging program called Gamepedia to keep track of my obscene game collection. And I had been entering this stuff in there uh, from time to time, but these big collections that I got, I just kind of ignored and said, I'm going to need to take some real time and work on this. And that was after getting the first one, and then a year or two went by, and I hadn't done any of it. And I got this other new collection, I was like, God, what do I have, what do I not have? So I just erased my entire Genesis collection and started from scratch. So for the last couple of months, I've been hitting it like as, as hard as I can, just kind of cataloging each individual game piece by piece, and the program is really cool, but it, it it allows for a lot of customization, which means that I just do the entire thing custom because the stuff that it automatically it's like say you type in Street Fighter Two uh, Special Champion Edition, it'll bring up like some bullshit Amazon.com listing for it that has like European box art and no accurate information or whatever like that, because. They, I the majority of the stuff that I have is, is retro games, and they don't really have a lot of good listings for a lot of the retro games in this program. But it does allow you to add your own cover art and add add your own you know fields and all this other stuff. So I finally finished cataloging my Sega Genesis games, and it was just it was this huge huge task that was just it was driving me nuts because it's really fun for a little while, but I started to get to these just loose cartridges of Genesis games, and I was tired of looking at them, and I'd rather be playing them. But um, I was, uh, it, was, it was a heck of a monumental task for me. I'm, I'm pretty proud of my, my end number. I have 193 Sega Genesis games. So I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. I am missing some major How many games, is though. there total? Oh, of Genesis games? Yeah. Oh, God. Just out of curiosity. You know, I really don't know. I bet it's a heck of a lot more than 193, though. Oh, probably. All right. How many Genesis games should someone own? Not 193. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, going through this collection, there's a there, there's a, a considerable amount of games that I own. That uh, let's see the the number I'm coming up with for total number of games available is 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 it over 700? I think. Jesus Christ! Yeah, oh, good Lord. Uh, I, I, it says third party, first party, and ROM cartridges uh, go into the nine hundred range. Yeah, that's a that's an awful lot of games. Uh, but anyway, um, let's see. I, I've got some really cool stuff in here, like. Uh, you know, like in Vector Man 1 and 2. I'm just looking at the end list here, like Wolverine Adamantium Rage. That game wasn't great, but it was kind of cool. But then I got shit like Warlock and Wheel of Fortune. Um, I do have Turrican, which is really nice. And I'm I'm missing the second Toe Jam and Earl game. I was kind of sad sad to see that. It's like, even with this list, there's... there's <laughs> major the games. What's wrong with you? Yeah, exactly. There's major games on here that I'm I'm still missing. I mean, Panic on Funkatron wasn't as good as the original, but it was still a pretty cool game. I have a neat uh copy of Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. The uh the label is upside down, so that's kind of neat. Who's bad? <laughs> Michael Jackson cuz he touched little boys. Oh god, he did. My niece played through the entire arcade game of uh, my six-year-old niece at uh, came t- to my birthday thing at Yestercades and played through the entire arcade game of Michael Jackson Moonwalker. Like, nobody pointed her to it. She just went, I'm going to play this game now. And then she just started playing it, and she was there for like an hour and change, just beat the whole game straight through. Because it's great, and I love every second of it that he turns <laughs> into a robot or dances magic into the hearts of the bad guys. I do have Bubsy 1 and 2. Um, Suck a dick. <laughs> I'm missing a lot of the sports games, but, you know, there's there's a lot of really interesting games. Uh, probably the coolest thing about this collection was a lot of the games that were in it were these weird shooters that I had never heard of before. Uh, and, and the majority of them were, were uh, published by this company called Renovation Products, which I was completely and totally unfamiliar with. Um... Let's see. Uh, 
Where's my where's the games by renovation? So there's something called Arrow Flash, um, Elemental Master, Exile, Gyries, Soul Dees I had heard of before, Valis I had heard of, another game called Whip Rush, and uh, something called Dino Land, which I actually has a little bit of a following from what I've come to understand. It's a uh, I played around with it for a little bit. It's a pinball game with cute dinosaurs in it. I don't know why it has any kind of cult following. It's bizarre, but I don't know. Um, the the Genesis was one of those systems I kind of skipped a lot of stuff for because I was such a diehard Nintendo fan, and then eventually I went back and played more uh, of the Genesis library, and it's there's some really good stuff on there. You ever um, played Urban Strike or Desert Strike or Jungle yeah, Strike? Yeah, I actually have. Fucking love those games. Which, which Strike ones did I get? Because the thing is, is they're all alphabetized, and none of those games, like... They don't start with the same word. I think I have Desert Strike. Yeah, I got Desert Strike, Return to the Gulf. Uh, and then there was Urban Strike? They always say what they're the sequel to, like, in their titles, too. Urban Strike, the sequel to Jungle Strike. That was it. And then Jungle Strike was, I think, the sequel to Desert Strike, right? Jungle Strike, the sequel to Desert Strike. <laughs> I love that that's their names. <laughs> like, the cover of the box. Jungle Strike, the sequel to Desert Strike. It was like Grand Theft Auto before there was a Grand Theft Auto, because you could get out of the fucking helicopter or airplane or whatever the fuck you were in and just... just helicopters. Shoot on foot and whatnot. You didn't get very far, but, I mean, you could. And uh, it, it was it was fun. I think in, like, Jungle Strike, you get out going to, like, a hovercraft or a tank and shit. It was cool as hell. Yeah, those games were awesome. They should make new ones of those. Yes. Kickstart <laughs> yeah, that shit arts. right now. Get on it. What, what are you doing with your time right now, EA? Huh? You're not making strike games. That's what you're not doing. Busy with your fucking Battlefield bullshit. <laughs> Need to make more strike games. Did you see the fucking Star Wars shit? Uh, that's true. I take it back, EA. I take it all back. Star Come Wars on. looks amazing. Well, it needs to be Star Wars Strike. I don't... Uh, why Why isn't it called that? Endor Strike? Endor oh Strike. I love it. <laughs> it's blowing up Ewoks Tatooine all Strike, day. Strike. The sequel to Endor Strike. <laughs> you know what I want to see? I want to see Jawas versus Ewoks. I want that to be a game. Just strictly Jawas versus Ewoks. Versus Cute. Gungans. No, <laughs> Gungans <laughs> wouldn't stand a chance. The Jawas and the Ewoks will form an alliance and kill all Gungans. Because they fucking blow. Fuck Jar Jar Binks. Fuck God, Sonic. I would love to see. <laughs> Misa's such a cunt. Wow, we're going to need the edit button there. <laughs> nah, I figured you didn't have enough work to do yet. Yeah. It's all been going pretty well so far. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a uh, that's what I've been uh that's what I've been doing. That's what I'm super proud of myself for. The next one I'm going to catalog uh, like redo in in more detail is my Master System collection, which according to this I have 48 games for, which I guess ain't bad for a Master System collection. I was just, nowhere near enough. I was genuinely surprised. I have more Genesis games now than I have Super Nintendo games, and that doesn't feel good to me. It shouldn't. It it doesn't. But you're you know, a bad fan. <laughs> I am. Well, I mean, my NES collection is 366, so. My the, Nintendo is still winning that by a landslide, but the Genesis versus Super NES stuff, I just I just have a lot more Genesis games. I'm a coast to say one sixty eight. God damn it! I I clicked on the Super NES section and the first game that pops up, fucking Warlock. <laughs> God damn! You it, have that, that twice. Yes, I have it on multiple systems. Thank you, LJN. We're gonna have to have a whole podcast about why the fuck you do that shit. <laughs> it's a different game. No, it's not. It's a. It's shit. Either way, it is. It's 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 glorious shit on multiple platforms. <laughs> well, I'm trying to collect as many versions of Shaq Fu as I can get my hands on. I have it on Genesis and Super NES right now, but I really want the well, Game Gear version. That's just a classic. It is. It's it's an absolute classic. I mean, Shaq Fu is fucking dope as fuck. It's, it's it's all time, man. It's all. I time. might I might even do a Kung Fu Fridays about Kung Fu video games. Don't. Shaq Fu would no, be on there. Don't. Be, no, be the don't. Number do one. It. It'd be the number one. Shut up. Stop. Please. It's I, no Michael Jordan cast in the Windy City. Well, or the Wu-Tang fighting game. Mm, or Shaolin My style. Hero. No more. Please. I, I'm giving... I tap out. Bad dudes. Oh, no. Yeah. Renegade. <laughs> oh, Renegade. I mean, we've gone all this way without talking about Double Dragon. I mean, that's 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 Kung Fu. 
That's a no. two-player simultaneous martial arts action, as it says on the box for Double Dragon mm -hmm. 2, mm -hmm. The Revenge. Street Sharks. Is that a game? That should be a game. Street Sharks. It was a Bucky sure O'Hare game. Oh, God. <laughs> all right, well, we've come sufficiently yep. off the rails. Dean, do the thing. Yes, Dean, do the thing for all of us. So, here we are, and you know what I'm going to tell you guys. Not to go fuck yourselves. Um, I'm actually going to ask you to check out our show notes where we have all the stuff listed that we talked about in the show, whether it be video games, uh, all the other good stuff we do, like our social links and all that. Uh, you can also check us out on iTunes, Facebook, Twitter, um, YouTube, Twitch, Instagram, uh, Tumblr. I think that's still a thing. And all the other awesome social media we're on. Uh, you can also check out our website that we have all the links to below in the show notes. Again, don't go fuck yourselves. Give us a five-star rating on iTunes, though. That would be awesome. I take it all back if you guys five-star rate us on iTunes. You should. Because I love you. Thank you, Dean. Thank you for doing that thing. You do so well. And thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, Dan, for joining us. Thank you, Dean, for joining us. And everybody should have a great night. And keep playing games. Or do you want me to go next? I leave fate in your hands. I would like both of you to go at the same time. Shut right. up, my kimono's Guys, talking to me. I like kimonos. <laughs> What what what's hang hang on hang on what what's that? Y you you want me to go right now? You think I'm sexy? You want me to put you back on? Okay, all right. I'm I'm gonna go now and I'm gonna put my kimono back on. How dare you not be doing this without the kimono on already? I was it was next to my <laughs> ear. It was whispering sweet sweet nothings to me. That's terrifying. You should take that kimono back. I will do no such thing. <laughs> Can you imagine what the kimono would do to him if he tried to take it back? Uh, I'd be like fucking Venom. <laughs> we are kimono. <laughs> How's Marge? <laughs> Enough. <laughs> but, um... Alright, let me let me start she that right? over. Yeah, no, fine. Just you tell me to let out the dog, so I... Uh... Kid won't let out the dog again! <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I'm shitting just, in my beer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ultra over. kill the dog. Yeah, okay. Marge. <laughs> we can fucking play a donut. We Fifteen good? million dollars. We don't have that kind of cash. We're not that liquid. <sighs> All right, I'm done. Sorry. Okay. I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna start from the top. Not the top top, but the, the top. <laughs> so I've been playing this game called Sonic Runners. <laughs> no, fuck that. <laughs> I really wish I had a kazoo right now. <laughs> you don't?